my fellow Americans. Welcome to my House of Cards Season 5 review. First of all, I'd like to say a huge thanks for all the positive feedback I've been getting on the Season 4 recap video that I made. Due to popular demand, I've decided to do Seasons 1 through to 3 and also Season 5, so hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for those. What a roller coaster season. None of us really knew what to expect with this season, but it certainly didn't disappoint. Even in the opening scene with Frank stirring trouble in Congress, declaring war, I will not yield. Great opening scene to start the season. Something I'm glad to see return is Frank's glances at the camera. Like, obviously he breaks the fourth wall every now and then, but uh, it's always nice when he glances at the camera and we sort of telepathically know what he's thinking. He did that a few times this season, and I'm glad to see it back. Now what was interesting, that Claire's tears that we saw in the trailer, we all thought that they would be crocodile tears, that she was putting it on for the public, but she later reveals to Frank that they were actual tears and she was actually moved by what the wife was saying. But either way, Frank thought it played well with the media. I liked an episode one where he kept the Ico terrorist from us. We didn't know that he was keeping him under lock and key while everyone else was out looking for him. But uh, he looks at the camera and says, you should know me by now and I guess we should. What we also find out early on is that Frank actually had an ex-lover named Tim. Uh, now Tim dies and Frank is actually honestly upset about this. During one of his uh, direct addresses, he actually has to pause for a moment and process that Tim's gone. Now about Doug and Leanne. They don't really get along at this point, but uh, they're incredibly loyal and obedient to the Underwoods, but we'll talk about more of that later. Tom Yates. Now, his character's pretty controversial amongst fans. People don't like him, people don't like his character, people don't like his relationship with Claire. I don't know, I used to like him. I thought that he added to the story in Season 4. I was fine with it, didn't know what everyone was going on about. But in Season 5, mmm, not so good. Him and Claire just have terrible dialogue. It's all romantic and really deep and meaningful. But it doesn't actually add anything to the plot. Like, I find myself zoning out and just not even really listening when they're talking just because his dialogue is just awful and Claire's just like, I love you, I don't love you. It's too much. Plus Tom is getting around, he's got Claire, he's got the tour guide, he's got this wife that he had for three years that he was his theology teacher or something. But anyway, we'll get to more of him later. Now at the start, Conway seems really confident in himself, even after the Underwoods are throwing everything they have at him, he still keeps his cool, even during that 24 hour Skype session. But things go south when there's no voters showing up to polls and a terrorist threat threatens Ohio and they can't vote. This results in the election being a tie and then the show actually skips forward two months and uh, Frank explains to us that the Senate and the House are the ones picking the Vice President and the President. Now the NSA man, Aidan McCullough, actually had quite a role in this season. He was the one responsible for the terrorist threat in uh, Ohio and also the cyber attack in the Washington district. But he ends up being responsible for Leanne getting kicked out of the administration, which is a bit of a shame. I was going to like her a little bit. While the House remains undecided, the Senate chooses Claire as the VP, which I found she did really well as the acting president. She came into herself, she was confident, she knew what she was doing right from day one. Now I obviously prefer Frank, but you can't argue that Claire was looking hot as president. But she sort of gets a bit too comfortable. I remember she was filling out a security clearance form and nearly didn't sign off on Frank's name. And also she didn't even invite him to an event in the Rose Garden. She said that he just wasn't necessary. Now since the tight election, Conway has become unhinged. He used to be cool, calm, collected, but now he's angry and irrational and uh, Frank even conceded to him, which I thought was a nice touch because he has in his head that he is the next president but there's just nothing happening to make that go forward. I thought that Claire dealt really well with the radioactive truck situation, and uh, then we're introduced to Jane. I liked her as a character. She was a great addition to the series. She was sort of shady like the Underwoods, but in a completely different way. I just thought that she has all those contacts with Ico, but she's still one of the good guys at the same time. I thought that was a nice dynamic, and it added a lot to the show, I thought. But then Conway's campaign goes down the toilet due to uh, Brockhart having uh, some incriminating evidence against him, a recording saying that he wants to take out the president and then uh, Conway's recording of him going nuts on an aeroplane saying give me the controls it just wasn't going well for them and that just sent them completely down the toilet the Underwoods then employ Mark Usher who is one of uh, Conway's political advisors they get him on board and uh, he sort of takes the role of Leanne he was a good character too very career driven he uh, is it's mentioned that he latches on to talent and sort of makes himself necessary to them so to he can advance forward. Now there was an interesting shot where Usher during the inauguration actually did a Frank style wave at the inauguration like he did in season one. People were thinking he may be breaking the fourth wall here himself and actually waving to the camera like Frank did, but uh, I don't know, sort of open for opinion I guess. Let me know what you guys think. 
Now, I don't know if it was due to his ex-lover passing away, but Frank then sleeps with Eric, who is uh, the actor that played his great-great-great-great-grandfather, uh, and it's amazing. Claire got to have boring old Tom, but Frank wasn't missing out on any of the action. But unfortunately, his relationship with Eric didn't go much further than that, and uh, I thought that was a bit of a shame. I would have liked to see that explored a bit more. Now, meanwhile, during all of this, Tom Hammerschmidt is getting dangerously close to the truth with all of uh, Frank's wrongdoings in the past. I found myself rooting for Tom Hammerschmidt. Like, I'm on the Underwood side always, but it's sort of good to have a good guy that's sort of finding his way, he making discoveries, he's actually getting a lot of stuff right by this point. But he's not the only one trying to take Frank down. The White House starts putting together a committee to impeach Frank. Now thank God, Tom quits his speech writing roles, which makes the Underwoods realise that he really doesn't have a place in the White House anymore. So Yates gets the boot, but not before Claire admits to him that Frank killed Zoe and Peter. Which, uh, I thought this was interesting, because we never really knew throughout the series uh, if Claire knew about it or not. Like, he sort of thought she knew, but she never actually came out and said it, and didn't actually directly talk to Frank about it. So it was interesting to just see her literally say those words to Tom. Now we also see the return of Walker. It's good to see him returning for another season. I've always liked his character. A pushover as he may be, he was a good character. But Frank talks to him and uh, must have rubbed him the wrong way, because he ends up turning on Frank and dobbing him in rather than pleading the fifth. This is the point where Frank realises that his presidency may just be him being haunted and hunted, as he says. He's just forever seeming to push people away, keep himself in power. He's starting to realise that, and uh, I thought that was interesting because it's true. But for episodes, seasons even, all he's been trying to do is just keep his power, and he's finally coming to the realisation that that's what's happening to him. Then Leanne jumps back on Doug, I mean back on board, because Aiden suspiciously kills himself, and uh, that allows her to tell all, so uh, the White House invite her back in. Now episode 11 is where we see Claire officially break the fourth wall. I was wondering how they were going to do this, obviously the last scene of season 4 was her looking at the camera, but uh, I wondered if she was going to start doing monologues herself, whether she would do as much as Frank, whether she would do nothing at all and you just know that she's aware of you, but this time she's sort of just doing something mundane, I think she was just looking around the White House for Frank and then she just stops, looks at the camera, and says that she's been aware of you the whole time and she's just not sure how she feels about you and sort of judges you in a way, but I thought this was done perfectly. It makes you sort of understand that she's aware of you, but she doesn't necessarily like talking to you, which I thought was a perfect way to handle it. Now at this point I was actually genuinely worried for Frank. Uh, the Democrats ask him to resign, the judiciary are getting dangerously close and got his head on a chopping block, and for the first time in pretty much the whole series, things don't go his way. Sometimes they don't, but they always get fixed in the end, but this time it's getting really bad and things are getting worse and worse and it's just not going his way at all. And the thing is that Claire's actually stayed separated from all this so that if uh, the worst is to happen to Frank, she's no part of it. Now poor Doug, late in the season he finds out that Laura Moretti actually knew all along that Doug killed her husband. And uh, she wasn't sleeping with him because she loved him, she was sleeping with him because she hated him. But to add insult to injury, the Underwoods then turn on him and throw him under the train in a matter of speaking and uh, get him to take the rap for Zoe's death. Now another victim of this is Kathy Durant. After she turns on Frank, he then decides that she needs a little push so he gets what he wants. It was a shame to see that happen to Kathy, but you just can't stay angry at Frank. Throughout the season, there was a journalist that came on board named Sean Jeffries. Now, he first worked for Tom Hammerschmidt and then for the White House, but he really didn't have much to do with the story. He interviewed a few key players along the way, but really his only plot point was that he told Frank that Hammerschmidt was onto him and Zoe. Now, after being kicked out of the White House, Tom gives Claire the manuscript for the Underwood tell-all book, which finally gives her a good enough reason to end him for good. I'm so glad that Claire did this sort of sinking to Frank's level and finally ended those painful scenes. Then in the mother of all twists, Frank Underwood resigns, which absolutely broke my heart. I continuously thought that he wouldn't end up going through with it, but lo and behold, it was just so uncomfortable for me to see Frank with next to no power and no way back in. Now I've never been a huge fan of Doug, but seeing him confess to Zoe's murders gave me the utmost respect for the man. He was Frank's main man till the end, which is more than I can say for Leanne, who uh, met her end shortly after. Now Mark Usher and Jane Davis really show their true colours then, because uh, Usher reveals to Claire that he wants to be VP, and threatens to reveal her secrets and take away from power if she doesn't. Plus Jane sounds as if she wants Frank dead for Claire's own good. But once becoming president, Claire Underwood's first act is war, and wait for it, not pardoning Frank. 
I was livid at this point. It's all well and good for Claire to run things from the White House while Frank sort of has infinite power from the outside. Frank even confesses that he did all of these leaks and all this stuff to get her to this point of power. But it turns out all our theories were true where Claire has just been in this for herself the whole time. Ending the season, it makes me so anxious that Frank has no real power. Usually he can manipulate a situation to be how he wants it to be, but now we can't even get in the front doors of the White House and I literally don't know what he's going to do locked away in that hotel. I thought this was a suspenseful ending. I thought this was an amazing ending. I just can't handle the thought that Frank's just standing there waiting around for imminent jail time. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think of season five? Let me know in the comments below. But that's all for this episode. Thanks so much for hanging out. If you had a good time, then spank that like button. If you subscribed during this video, then welcome aboard. This is Matt Rogers, signing off.